welcome to ISTV News. I'm Subla Kangabu. Let's look at the top stories. As Manipur Human Rights Commission has remained dormant for a long time, efforts in decreasing human rights violation have been impeded. And now the news in details. Head of Center for Human Rights and Duty Education, Manipur University, Dr. M. Suresh Kumar has said that as the Manipur Human Rights Commission has remained inactive for a long time, efforts in decreasing the incidence of human rights violations are being hampered badly. He said this while talking to media person in his office chamber on the MU campus today. Dr. Suresh Kumar further said that, though Manipur is a small state, the incidents of human rights violations occur innumerably. In such a situation, keeping the Manipur Human Rights Commission inactive is not right. The Manipur Human Rights Commission was established under the Protection of Human Rights Act 1993 with the sole objective of protection of human rights in the state. If the state government takes up the necessary steps to revive the Human Rights Commission in the larger interest of the people, it will be good for everyone, Dr. Suresh Kumar said. Committee CB, Chairperson, Chief Minister, Speaker of the Legislative Assembly, the Minister in Charge of the Home Department, Opposition Leader, I am very sensitive to the Human Rights Commission, the Chairperson, some of the members in Canada. The election of office bearers of the Manipur Film Forum was held at the office of the forum at Sankar Tokis at Lampfell without any problem today. The election was held for the post of chairman, vice chairman and secretary. S. Mangolja, R. K. Ganaranjan and L. Surjakanta Sharma are vying for the post of chairman. Oken Amakcha and Virendra Salam are fighting for the post of vice chairman. Somen Moirangcha, R. K. Tizen and N. G. Ganeshwar are contending for the post of secretary. Altogether, 70 electors cast their votes during the election. Pairan Bamlika Youth Development Organization today felicitated the bronze medal winner in kayaking, Konjeng Bam Amar, and bronze medal winner in canoeing, Mairen Bam Anjali, in the 35th National Games held in Kerala recently. Bronze medal winner Anjali told the story of her performance in the National Games. And moving towards to national and international news, Supreme Court has said that special benches should be created at all high courts in the country to speedily decide elections-related petitions. A bench of justices J. Chalameshwar and Rohitan F. Manariman asked for creation of earmarked benches with judges assigned the task of exclusive deciding elections petition. The bench observed that it is most undesirable to let an MP or MLA continue even for a day if he or she has been elected using illegitimate means. The court said, it is very rarely an election dispute get resolved during the tenure of declared candidates reducing the adjudicatory process into a mockery of justice. Finance Minister Arun Jaitley presented the first full-year budget of the NDA government in the Lok Sabha today. In his opening remarks, he said, The credibility of Indian economy has been re-established and the world is predicting that India is, it is India's chance to fly. He said the rupee has become stronger by 6.4%. Jetley said, the government needs a well-targeted system of subsidies rather than to cut them. The finance minister has announced the allocation of 5,300 crore rupees for development of micro-irrigation. He said, a target of 8.5 lakh crore rupees credit will be extended to farmers in 2015-16. Jetley has proposed 25,000 crore rupees to the Rural Infrastructure Development Fund. He said, the government is committed to utilize the vast postal network spread across the villages of the country to provide for increasing access to the financial system. The government will also propose the Prime Minister's Raksha Bima Yojana, offering the coverage of 2 lakhs rupees for just paying premium of 12 rupees.
The finance minister said the government will also propose to launch a tal pension yojana, which will provide a defined pension to the old beneficiaries. He said, initial sum of 150 crore rupees has been proposed to create a world-class IT hub to take advantage of competitiveness. He said, the Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guaranteed Scheme has received the highest ever allocation, which will help in increasing the daily wages of the beneficiaries. He proposed an additional allocation of 5,000 crore rupees this year. He proposed to work on developing Indian gold coin, which will carry the Ashok Chakra. The government has allocated another 1,000 crore rupees for Nirbhaya Fund to further strengthen the security of women. The government also proposes to establish the second AIIMS in Bihar to cater the health needs of the people in the state. He also proposed to set up AIIMS in Jammu and Kashmir, Punjab, Tamil Nadu, Himachal Pradesh and Assam. The government will launch a national skill missions to create employment opportunities to the youth below 25 years. The government has increased the allocation to defense by 25,000 crore rupees to 2 lakhs. 46,000 crore rupees. He also proposed to set up Film Production Animation Institute in Arunachal. And before we wind up the top stories once again. As Manipur Human Rights Commission has remained dormant for a long time, efforts in decreasing human rights violation have been impeded. Well, thank you so much for joining with us and stay tuned for more news.